Hey guys, and welcome back to another lesson. Today I want to talk to you about something that I think every pianist and musician experiences throughout their career, the feeling of being stuck. Now, being stuck is the same as saying, I feel like I'm not getting better at playing the piano. What I want to do in today's lesson is analyze this feeling. Now, visually speaking, this video is going to be one of the simplest I've ever made. There's going to be just one graphic on the screen, really, most of the time. But this is going to be the most important graphic in your musical career. So pay attention. I'm going to draw, really, what is a map for how a pianist or a musician progresses from the initial sort of beginning stages of their training to the advanced stages, and I'll point out where exactly along this pathway you can actually end up getting stuck, or what might give you this sort of feeling. So in as much as this is a video about getting better at playing the piano, you could also say it's a video about the career path that a pianist experiences. Now, before I begin, I want to address an open question, which is, what does it actually mean to get better at playing the piano? And this question actually has two answers, which are dependent, but not the same. The first answer is the easiest to grasp. It refers to the technical advancement of your playing. If you can play the C major scale today at the metronome of a uh, 100 BPM, and you can play it in a week's time at 110, this is getting better. Mastering exercises, learning new pieces, all of these really constitute one aspect of getting better. Now, it might seem that it's very easy to get better at playing the piano. Why don't you just practice whatever you're weak at and get better at it over time? Now, this is a major way of improving your playing, and it should be followed by any musician and specifically piano player. However, the feeling of being stuck while learning the instrument actually refers to a different aspect of this process. Being stuck is really not knowing which way to go, what to practice, how to build yourself up. These two problems are complementary, but different. The first refers to practicing something that you've laid out for yourself. The second involves understanding what should be practiced and how to build your skills. Now, I'm going to start by drawing a schematic curve, which really signifies the progression of how we learn throughout the different stages of our career, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. Each of these periods is characterized by an initial stage of fairly rapid growth, followed by a plateau. And the plateau is where you end up feeling stuck. The most important thing for you to understand when reading this chart and getting yourself unstuck is, first of all, identifying at which stage you're at, and then understanding and addressing the challenges of each plateau. At the beginning, when you learn to play piano, there is a fairly short, fast, somewhat explosive period where you pick up many, many new concepts and master them at a shallow sort of form or rate. This is when you'll first learn about chords, maybe scales a little bit. You'll learn how to play some simple songs that you like, learn the name of the different notes, some simple theory concepts like maybe an interval. And then this progress will come to a halt. You'll fairly rapidly reach a stage where you have many different concepts which you've picked up, but at a fairly shallow level. You also won't necessarily see how they come together. For example, how do scales relate to chords? Why some people choose to play a C major chord in one way while others choose to play it a different way. Your finger dexterity will also be fairly lacking especially in your fourth and fifth fingers in each hand. You will then hit the first plateau. Now, how do you get these separate, independent little skills that you've picked up in the initial explosive period to start coalescing, coming together? 
In other words, how do you break through from the beginner stage to the intermediate stage? The answer to this riddle is order. As a beginning pianist, all you see are tips of islands scattered about. Your job is to uncover the underwater terrain that connects them. Now what does this entail from a practical standpoint? How do you go from individual concepts to some sort of unified view of music? Although this might seem difficult, fortunately this is a fairly routine adventure. I say routine because the path has been cleared for you many many decades and even centuries ago. Your job can be divided into two parts. First, technical. You need to improve your technical skills and dexterity and finger independence. There are many books on piano technique out there. The most famous one is probably the Book of Exercises by Hannon. You can find it for just a few dollars on any music bookstore that you can think of. You can even find it for free on the internet in PDF form. There are other books for working on technique. For example, Oscar Peterson, the famous jazz pianist, has a book on jazz etudes. Honestly, it doesn't really matter that much which book you start out with. What's important is you work through the book systematically and methodically, starting with each exercise at a slow tempo and building up as you become more and more confident. Working with a metronome is important as well. The point is that there's a fairly well-known, simple, straightforward roadmap for improving your piano technique. All you have to do is set aside a fixed amount of time each day for you to work on these exercises. Now the second aspect you need to work on as a beginning pianist that will get you from the disjoint ideas into a more unified view of music is theory. There are many books on music theory. In particular, I'd recommend that you focus on more modern theory. Uh, anything that has to do with jazz, I think would be a good place to start. There are many books on jazz theory, not just jazz piano theory, but jazz theory in general. And I even have a course on my channel, which I will link to in the video description. Again, the point here is that there are many resources that you can work through systematically, set aside a certain amount of time each day and read and practice. The books will usually also have exercises. What does this entail? Well, getting familiar with different kinds of scales in all keys, uh, understanding what functional harmony is, what chord substitutions are, uh, what the 2-5-1 progression is, how to build chord progressions, voice leading, and so on and so on. Now, if this sounds tedious to you, uh, it's probably because it is. You will need to work methodically at concepts which will initially have little meaning Think of it as learning to read by learning about grammar, vocabulary, the parts of a sentence, and so on. Not very exciting stuff, but things that will be essential to reading and writing. This is also why many people get stuck at the beginner stage, because the transition from beginner to intermediate is a little bit boring, to be honest. You only see the payoff of your actions down the road. It will take many months and maybe a year or two before you come to a point where things start to click, come together. However, once they do, you will be an intermediate pianist. This is at least my own definition of an intermediate level pianist or musician. Someone who can move around the keyboard with some ease, can play different chords and versions, uh, scales, can finger the scales, and is familiar with many of the important concepts from music theory. So what is it that sets an intermediate level player from an advanced level player? Well, if you go and ask or talk to intermediate level players, what you'll often hear is a similar complaint from many of them. I know about all of these concepts, I can play the different chord types, I can play the different scales, uh, but I don't really sound like I want to sound. I don't really sound like that guy on the record that I really like. I'd like to sound like Oscar Peterson or Bill Evans, uh, if you're a jazz person, 
or maybe some other more modern player or soul player or, or whatever. But you're missing something. You're missing something that makes you sound as polished as these players on the big record sound. This is going to be the second plateau that differentiates between intermediate and advanced level players. Now, by the way I've described it, it shouldn't come as a big surprise when I tell you what the way to overcome it is. And that is by imitation. The key word here is imitation. There is a saying that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Uh, nowhere is this truer than in music and in playing. There is no way around it. If you want to sound like player X, you need to imitate player X. You need to copy the chords and chord voicings the player uses. You need to transcribe and play their solos, analyze the songs in which they play, understand the parts and how they lay them out. Now this makes some people uncomfortable. Isn't music really about originality? How can you become a better musician by imitating other musicians? If you try to sound like Oscar Peterson, aren't you going to end up sounding like Oscar Peterson and really be kind of boring? I mean, there's already an Oscar Peterson and he's or was a lot better at being Oscar Peterson than you are ever going to be. Well, that's true, but we're not one dimensional beings. There is no musician I know who is influenced by a single other musician. In fact, we're influenced by a wide range of them. This means that you need to imitate the styles and playings of many different musicians. It's this melting pot of styles that will end up forging a style that will be unique to you. You're the only person who's going to imitate and bring together and fuse the styles of these different musicians that you like and look up to. In other words, don't worry about originality at this stage. Focus more on imitating. Now let's talk practicality. How do you go about and imitate another player? Well, in some cases, it's actually pretty easy. In jazz piano, for example, uh, one of the resources that's available are transcriptions. Pretty much every great player has books and sheet music with transcriptions of their playing, at least from their famous records. You can easily pick up books that transcribe Bill Evans or Oscar Peterson or Keith Jarrett or Lyle Mays. Just pick one. Another skill that will become exceedingly useful at this stage of your career is your ear training. Again, there are books and videos on how to train your ears. But my point is you need to use those skills at this point to imitate other players. So for example, you need to transcribe their solos. This is pretty painstaking and time consuming, but it will teach you a lot on both how these players produce their sound and will also give you ideas on how to use their musical language to produce songs, solos, and music that you appreciate. Transcribing a piece or a solo by Oscar Peterson is as close as you'll ever get to getting a listen directly from Oscar Peterson himself. As you do this repeatedly for different artists that you think highly of, you'll eventually get to the stage of being an advanced player. And at this point, you sound good, you sound professional. You'll even have your own style. It's surprising that by imitating others, you'll develop your own style, but it's actually going to happen naturally. Trust me on this. This will bring you to the third and last plateau in your development as a musician. And I call this third and last plateau stagnation. Now this is in fact inevitable and I'll explain why this is so. I'll also explain how to fight it. Now, why do good musicians stagnate? Well, think about a, an experiment where a monkey learns to perform a complex task and gets a reward. Now, what do you think the monkey is going to end up doing? Well, the monkey is going to learn to perform this task exceedingly well so he can get the treat every time. In this analogy, I'm afraid to say so, you are the monkey. Well, so am I, and any other musician is. 
once we start sounding good, once we find a style of playing that makes us sound great both in our own ears and in the ears of our listeners and followers, we tend to then repeat it because we get positive reinforcement. We have a, a supportive crowd. Uh, the chords we play resonate at some deep level within us. So we just keep doing the thing that makes us feel good. We play the chords with the voicings that sound lush and great. We play the solos on the scales that we know will sound good and fit with the chords and so on and so on. This is natural and expected. And actually I would suggest that you proceed exactly along this route. Become good at something, become so good that you end up wanting to do it more and more. But be careful not to stagnate. If you're not aware of yourself repeating patterns, you'll end up repeating them indefinitely. The same is true for bands as well. Bands end up repeating themselves. They have a sound that they cannot escape from in some cases. So I'll conclude this video by giving you some advice on how to fight stagnation. And this brings me to the third concept that you need to foster once you hit the third plateau. And this is stepping out of your comfort zone. Pretty much anything that will make you step out of your comfort zone is an excellent way of fighting stagnation. Now this can be something that is as simple as playing in another key. You might think this is kind of weird, but think about it. Many times when we learn theory or learn to play the different chords, we learn them only in a few, in a subset of keys. And even if we try to learn all keys, we end up playing in only a, a certain subset. Beginners often make this mistake by confining themselves to the C major scales, the white notes and the piano, and trying to avoid the black notes. By forcing yourself to play in another key, let's say instead of C major, play in B major, or G flat major maybe, or E flat major, you're basically fighting against the muscle memory that your fingers have acquired. The chords will all be transposed, they'll still be the same chords, but they'll all be fingered differently. You know, it will force you to rethink the way or the muscle memory that you've acquired in the other keys in which you feel more comfortable. Another great way to fight stagnation is by going back to the second plateau and imitating other musicians. As you grow, you'll probably come across other musicians that you think highly of, and it's worth it taking one or two of them and learning to imitate them as well, and even doing this repeatedly throughout your musical career. For example, in recent years, I've come across uh, Lewis Cole and his band Nowhere, which uses these sort of staccato-like rhythms while playing the keys. And I found them extremely fascinating. They were quite different from more traditional forms of playing jazz piano. So I took the time to reverse engineer his playing and sort of assimilate some of the ideas in his playing. And I would recommend a similar approach to anyone who is a musician. Every now and then, when you find a new and exciting musician that you like the music of, take a break and start imitating them, copy their solos copy their voicings, their playing, their songs, and arrangements. Finally, the third great way of avoiding stagnation is playing with other people. Work with other people. Get to know other musicians. When you are forced to interact with other people who do not fall into your own patterns, new styles and ideas emerge. Just as relationships in the real world with other people change you, so do relationships with musicians, musical relationships, change your playing. Maybe pick up another style. Maybe you've been playing heavy metal until this point and you suddenly start showing interest in jazz and eventually this leads to some sort of fusion style in which you play heavy metal rhythms but use more complex jazz voicings for the guitar chords or piano chords that you end up playing. So these are just some of the many ways in which you can fight stagnation. But my point in this video has been more to give you an overview of why the different periods of feeling stuck come about, identifying them, 
and finding or using the correct approach to fight them. To go from the beginner to the intermediate stage, you have to put order in your knowledge. From the intermediate to the advanced stage, you need to imitate. And for from the once you're at the advanced stage, to avoid stagnation, you need to innovate. I hope the ideas I've put out in this video will be of use to you and that you've learned something interesting, and I'll see you next time.